The SharePoint framework enables developers to customize the rendering of data in a SharePoint's list column. This is done by creating a custom field customizer and associating it with that column. Now the project template that's created by the Yeoman generator when you create a field customizer extension only has the necessary things in the extension to associate it with a site column or a new site column that's created using the legacy feature schema and XML provisioning. But that doesn't help if you wanna register your field customizer with an existing site column or a column in a SharePoint list. It only works for new columns. To register your field customizer with an existing column, you'll have to write some code and call the SharePoint REST API. So in this video, not only am I gonna show you how to do that, but I'm also gonna share with you a little utility that I created that you can use to do the same thing without writing any code. Interested to learn more? Cool, then let's get started. Hey, I'm Andrew, and if you're new here, subscribe to get notified of future videos for professional developers on Microsoft 365, Microsoft Azure, and SharePoint framework topics. Okay, before we get started, let's define the problem before we look at what the solution's gonna be. The SharePoint Framework Field Customizer extension lets developers create a custom rendering uh, implementation for columns in SharePoint lists. And like all extensions, there are two parts to getting this extension working in your SharePoint sites. The first part is that you're gonna create an extension and install it in your SharePoint site, just like any component. Then you have to register the Field Customizer extension with a column. And many developers think that this is only done when you install the component because the default, default project includes a feature schema XML to uh, create the new site column. But like I said in the introduction, this doesn't help you if you wanna register the customizer with an existing site column or an existing column in a SharePoint list. But thankfully, you can use the SharePoint REST API to do this. So let me demonstrate this and by showing you a little utility that I created to show how this works. Now this web part that I'm gonna show you, it uses the SharePoint REST API to register, change, or deregister a field customizer on an existing list column. The source to this project is included in the student download uh, for my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework. And I included a link to the course in the description below this video. Okay, let's see how this works. So as you can see here, I've created this list that has three columns in it. It's got operand A, operand B, and a result. Now what I wanna do is I wanna modify the column called result with a field customizer to show the sum of the values in column in the operand A and operand B column. And you can see here, I've got two test items that I've added to this list. Test one has nothing filled into the result field. Test two has just this, the results of adding those two numbers together, three and four is seven but I wanna change the rendering of both of these, of both of these uh, fields uh, in this column for the result column. So I've got this field control that I've already built, packaged and deployed to my SharePoint site as well. So if I come over here and look at the site contents, so here you can see that I've got my field customizer already installed. Um, and I did that by uploading the package to the apps for SharePoint, the site collection app catalog. Uh, and here you can see it's been uploaded and it's uh, everything about it. There's no errors or anything in it. So it's all installed just fine. Uh, if we come over here and we take a look at the code for this, for our solution, um, this is coming straight from my course. So that's why you, uh, from the extensions chapter. So we're looking at the field custom, uh, the field customizer for summing two values together. And if I look at the code for this, it's really straightforward. There's nothing fancy here. In the on render cell method, I'm going to get a reference to columns A and B. And then I'm going to go add the result together of A and B. And then I'm going to update the results by just taking whatever the DOM element is for where our field customizer is going to be uh, associated with the column on the, on the site or on the list. And I'm going to write this inner HTML property, the two values from those other two cells, and then write out the results. Uh, of it as well to the screen. So I should have a nice new, something that says three plus four equals in bold seven. And the same thing for the other column as well. So this is the one that's all deployed and we're ready to go through and, and to wire this up and get it running. Now, again, just to review, if I come back over to my simple math, uh, my simple math uh, list, we can tell that my field customizer is not registered with this column or in this list right now because I'm not getting my special rendering. So what I wanna do is I wanna register my field customizer with the result column. 
Notice that nothing is rendering in the result column because that's what's going to be the job of my custom field of my field customizer. Um, we do see a value in the result column right now, but that's not we're not going to end up using that in my field customizer project. One of the things that I've done is I'm going to remove the I remove the field customizers elements XML file from the feature when the package was installed, so it didn't uh, create an unnecessary column. So we can see that if I go look at it in the B roll and I look at the elements XML, we can see that this is how the site column would be created. And then one of the things I did is in the package solution, I just went in and made sure that this file was not listed here so that it wasn't going to go ahead and register or create the site column when the feature got activated. Um, I'm showing that here, but in, when I actually deployed it, I did. I wouldn't normally do that just because I want to I want to wire it up through the Rust API. Now, let me show you my little utility project. It's called the Field Customizer Manager. All right, let's register the installed field customizer with this little utility web part that I've created. So I've got this utility web part inside of the download uh, for the extensions uh, chapter of my course. If I open this guy up, um, what I'm going to do is I want to go through and start is and go ahead and um, go ahead and I'm going to build this guy. So I'm going to jump over into that folder, extension manager, and I've already installed all of the npm packages and I've already built the project. So really, all I have to do is just say gulp serve, and I'm going to say no browser because we're just we're going to go. Um, we're going to specify where we want to test this ourselves, and it's just a web part, so I don't need to go have all the fancy stuff on the URL for uh, testing an extension. All right, now that we see the reload task has completed, we know that our local web server is up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tab, and I'm going to go to our uh, site, and I'm going to go to the hosted workbench. Next, let's go ahead and add our web part, which is our field customizer, uh, onto the workbench here. So the way this web part works is that you first select a list in the current site and then a column from that list. And if the column in the list has a gear next to it, that indicates that the column has a field customizer that's been applied to it. So I'll start by first selecting my list, which is our simple math list, and then I'm going to find the column. And we know the column was named result. So here we don't see the gear next to it, so we can tell it hasn't been customized. So now once the column has been selected, I need, then need to set the GUID of the field customizer that's installed on the site to the field customizer ID property. So I'll do that by coming back over here to my project and I'll find what the ID was of that field customizer we created. And that's going to be found in the manifest for our field customizer. So I'll just grab that value, come back over to the browser and paste that in. Now I can also optionally set the custom properties on the registration if your field customizer has any expectation of those properties. But in my case, my field customizer doesn't. So I'm just gonna leave this blank. Finally, I'm gonna click save to save my changes. Now, by the way, this simple field customizer is one of the demos in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework. I'll include a link to that in the notes below. Now, the students in my course have access to download all the code samples for the project. So if you're a student, you can grab that. And if not, well, you might want to become a student. Now, let's see if this worked by going back to the list and refreshing the page. Cool, we can see that our field customizer is registered on that column, on the result column, because we can see the text that's being written out and overwriting even the test two, uh, where it was saying seven, now we're actually putting out our own text. Now, if I go back and I refresh the hosted workbench page, I'm gonna see the result column has a gear next to it, indicating that the column has a field customizer that's been applied to it. Now, let's clear out the ID of our field customizer and save our changes and refresh the list again to deregister our field control. And I'm going to go back to the page on my list and refresh the list, and we can see that it's been deregistered. Pretty cool, right? If you want to use this project in your tenant, I'll include a link to the description in the description where you can download the packaged version of this project, uh, of this utility project. Now, the students in my course, they've got access to the source of this project to see how it works to implement it in their own solutions. 
And this project uses the Fluent UI uh, controls and a React-based web part that's created using React hooks. All the interaction with um, that's gonna happen with SharePoint happens through the SharePoint REST API. So now that you've seen the finished version, let's see how this works. Now to keep it simple, I'm gonna use the browser's network tab just to browse all the different calls that are being made. All right, so what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and open up the dev tools. Um, I've got the fetch XHR uh, tab selected, and then I'm also gonna filter on just the underscore API. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna only show me a request coming in this um, uh, down here at the bottom in the request stack. It's only gonna show me those uh, calls that are going to the SharePoint REST API, which is what I care about. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's refresh the page because the first thing that our web part did, if I scroll down, look at this, is that we can see that it's getting our, it's gotta get a, a collection of lists that it's gonna bind to it. We can see there's our, here's our collection of all of these lists. Scroll like this and make sure we can see a little bit more. All right, so it's making a couple calls to the SharePoint REST API, but this is the call that I'm making. So I simply made a call to my current SharePoint site. It's a dev01, and I went to the underscore API slash web slash lists, and then I said, give me all the lists, but I only want the ID and the title property and only show me lists where their um, hidden property is set to false. So the payload that I get back, or that's what I sent, but then here's the response that I get back. This is the raw response, but if I wanna see a preview of it, we can see we get a collection of all of our lists and we'll just pick one arbitrarily. This one is our site pages list. You can see here that we're getting the ID of the list and the title of that list as well. Okay, so now that we have that, the next thing is, is that once I select, let's go ahead and go back over to um, the, let's close that part so we can actually see the actual request that come back. All right, so we can go ahead and clear these results out. Let's go select our list for simple math. And what that then did when we selected simple math, it needs to go in and then get a list of all the columns. So how did I do that? Well, scroll down, we're on our, we need to look at our underscore API. And there we go, we're going to the fields endpoint now. You see we're going to, our, going to a specific list. So I'm passing in the GUID of the list that we just selected. And then I'm saying go to the fields endpoint and I wanna get the title or the ID, the title and the internal name of the uh, of the column because we're going to have to we're going to we're going to refer to that column by his internal name, and then I wanted to grab the client side component ID and the client side properties uh, properties as well on that column. And the reason why I do that is because that's how I'm able to determine if when I select this result here, um, if I'm able to see if it's been customized or not. So the res the results that we get back from that. You see here, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of columns and I'll find, let's see if I can just guess and see which one ours is. Uh, it's probably, maybe it's this one. We're looking for one that says field text because I created a single line of text. And I didn't know, this is the title field. But what you can see here is that you can tell when a field, when a column has not been customized because his, comp his client side component ID property is set to a GUID of all zeros and the properties uh, property is set to null. All right, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through and wire this up. So obviously what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the GUID on this. And when I click save, the save button, we should see another call uh, that's going to go back to the SharePoint, um, uh, it's gonna go back to the SharePoint REST API to update that column. So I'll hit save. And here we can do, this time if I look at the headers for this, we're doing an HTTP post instead of the gets. And again, I'm going to the list collection. So specifically that list, our simple math list, I'm looking at the fields uh, collection and I'm looking at a specific field based on his the fields GUID. And what I'm doing is the, the payload that I'm submitting to it. So here's the actual payload. And I can look at the payload just as raw text. Um, the only thing I'm sending it is an object for the property of the uh, client side component ID and the GUID of our field customizer. And then I'm setting an empty string to the client side properties um, as well. And we can see what that looks like as parsed as these parsed object right here that I'm passing in. So I'm doing an HTTP post to the specific columns endpoint. And the only thing I'm passing in is a JSON object that contains a name value pair of the client side properties and the client side ID of that component. So let's go back and let's just refresh this and we can see the value that we get back from this is that this time, if I go to uh, the 
simple math property or a simple math list, and then I choose that column, column. Now, if I look at all the fields that come back, now this is gonna, let's see if we can find it again. So let's give us a little more room to work here. How about this one, there you go, there's our result field. And you can see here, we set the value of our custom, uh, of our, our, our custom field control um, has been set. And when I wanna reset this, all I end up having to do is just say, remove the field customizer. And what that does, if we go back and look at our network stack, we can see that we're doing yet another post to that same field. So the fields endpoint collection with that GUID, I come over and look at the payload and I'm setting it back to his initial value, just nulling out the GUID and the properties. Now I much prefer this option when using, uh, than using the XML provisioning option that we have in SharePoint. It's much more flexible and it's also not as black box like XML provisioning is in SharePoint. I mean, sure, XML provisioning works when it works, but when it doesn't, it's a black hole and an absolute debugging nightmare to figure out what happened. What do you think about using the REST API to register a field control? Let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you wanna see more videos about the SharePoint framework or SPFX hacks, like the one I just showed you in this video. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe by smashing that red subscribe button below uh, the video or in this card. Um, so that you're going to see when I publish more videos for professional developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure, including topics on the SharePoint framework. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.